So it will deliver air into a room, typically at 55 degrees. Now that is trying to bring the room to a set point or equilibrium um, at your desired temperature. From the heartland of America, the gateway to the West, this is Engineering Tomorrow, the podcast. Keeping you entertained and in the know on the latest commercial and industrial heating, cooling, and water treatment technologies. Good morning or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Engineering Tomorrow podcast. I'm your host today, Brian Gomsky. I am here again with Stephen Higgins of Midwest Machinery. We are in the prestigious valley of Chesterfield, Missouri, broadcasting on a beautifully sunny 100 degree day. And we are here talking about HVAC, keeping your building hot, keeping your building cold. Let's get into it. Thanks again for having me today, Brian. So uh, let's start off with the news, the HVAC news real quick. Um, Today, Dan Foss announced they bought a minority share in Nolumbo. Looks like Nolumbo is a company that puts a coating on heat exchangers. Looks like uh, they're quoted as saying, with this step, we will be able to offer customization capabilities that meet growing customer requirements for superior performance and reliability in the HVAC market. But we'll see what happens in the coming months with that uh, with that acquisition. With that said, we are going to jump into our topic today, which is VAV boxes. And Stephen, you just attended uh, training for VAV boxes. Where was that? How was that? How did that go? It went well, Brian. Uh, we were down in Largo, Florida, where ETI manufactures their VAV boxes and also fan coil units. So, for those of us that uh, don't know who ET- ETI is, um, who's the parent corporation for that? It's a Johnson Controls product. Okay, it's a Johnson Controls product. Do you know if any other are any other brands manufactured in that same facility, or is it just ETI? It's just ETI. Okay. All right, so let's start with the obvious. What is a VAV box? So, Brian, a VAV box is just a unit that is ducted from a uh, an air handler that will monitor airflow, uh, change air speed. All right, so it's a metal box. How does it, how, what's in there? What is there, a probe that's monitoring the? There's a damper. And what it does is make sure that um, air is delivered at varying speeds or your variable airflow. um, And it's delivered at the same temperature. This is different than a constant speed system that just changes the temperature. In a typical office installation, how many VAV boxes would you assume would be in there? It really depends on the amount of rooms that you have. Um, In open area, you can put a larger VAV box in, but every smaller room would have its own VAV box as well. So does every room have their own VAV Not necessarily. You can duct off of one VAV box to serve multiple rooms. Um, It just depends on occupancy. So the the only thing mechanically moving on the box is a damper? Correct. And then it's going to open or close based on need? I guess you would close it if you're too hot or too cold, or does the temperature have nothing to do with it? It's just airflow. Just airflow, but it is monitoring your uh, too hot or too cold. So it will deliver air into a room, typically at 55 degrees. Now that is trying to bring the room to a set point or equilibrium um, at your desired temperature. So the airflow um, will change that. Tell me about electrical wiring. Is this the low voltage? Does this need standard 110? Yes, standard low voltage, um, 120 volt. Um, There also can be an ad for electric reheat. Um, We typically see that. Uh, This is to bring your air temperature back up to a more comfortable. um, 
Right. So a 55 degree air is running through the vents and someone turns up the thermostat. Potentially, um, you'll actually have a heater turn on even in the summer to warm up the air a little bit so it's not too cold in the room. Yeah, it's just so you don't have 55 degree air blowing on you. Um, when you turn up the thermostat, you're going to be adjusting the amount of air that is coming into your room. Are most VAV boxes a commodity or are there varying differences with the, within the manufacturers? They're all going to do pretty much the, the same thing. Um, a lot of manufacturers will look at sound and the sound that it makes um, delivering the air. That is a major importance when manufacturers are looking at VAV boxes. Um, typically in libraries and other big rooms, you know, you want to make sure that that sound level is low. And this is, you know, a big deal when you're talking about airflow whistling and coming through your unit. If you could make sure that it's ultra quiet, um, it would definitely improve your, uh, occupancy, uh, I guess comfort level. Yeah. We, I think we've all been in rooms and commercial buildings when that, when that air starts moving, there is a noticeable sound level difference when they turn on. So the higher end ones are going to do better job at sound. Correct. Okay. And that, what does that have to do with the insulation or just the way it's constructed? The way it's constructed, it's still going to be installed the same fashion. And what, what are those construction measures that they're taking to ensure that the sound is, uh, sound levels lower than some others? Um, some insta insulation around the unit. Um, different type of damper will be used to help control that uh, that whistling that you hear. Um, that those are the the main changes on the unit. And what are the units typically made out of? Just sheet metal. Sheet metal. Okay. And how long is the turnaround when you're ordering VAV boxes? Are they, are they stocked? Are they all custom made? Um, there are stock units definitely out there. Um, depends on your you know, situation, I'm, you can get one pretty quickly. Uh, but, you know, some of them that are quite large, they might take a little bit longer. It You need to consult with your uh, manufacturer on that. What can we as reps do to better explain VAV boxes to engineers? Well, we really need to just look at the sound performance. And you need to um, look at your mins and max airflow. You need to Make sure that your unit's able to deliver the smallest amount of air and the maximum amount of air required for occupancy comfort. An another thing that Envirotech is really proud of is their uh, airflow probe. Um, there's a lot of units out there that will use an airflow probe of sorts to monitor your air coming through your VAV box. Now, this... Um, it's coming from your air handler, so you need to make sure that there's not a uh, a pressure, too big of a pressure loss for each VAV box. Is that air from your air handler needs to make sure it makes it all the way through all of the VAV boxes in your building. Um, so you need to make sure that you're monitoring this airflow correctly. Tell me a little bit about the factory uh, for Envirotech. Where is that located? So it's located in Largo, Florida, which is about 20 to 30 minutes away from Tampa Bay. But um, they do a lot of sound testing there, too, um, as well. Okay, so they have a full R&D center? Yes. Well, thank you again, Brian, for having me. Uh, I hope this helps. There you have it, folks. The exciting world of VAV boxes with Stephen Higgins. At the end of the day, yes, it is a metal box with a probe and a damper, um, but they are not all created equal. You want to really make sure you can control that sound. And in those environments where sound is vital, make sure that the ones you're going to purchase um, have guaranteed sound, sound measurements and um, <coughs> the owners aren't calling you up after everything's installed and complaining because that's going to be uh, quite the challenge. You have to rip something like that 
that out and replace it once it's uh, once everything's drywalled and the ceilings are put up. And so with that said, stay cool this summer, and we'll be back next week with another exciting episode of Engineering Tomorrow. Thank you. You've been listening to Engineering Tomorrow, the podcast. For more insights and downloadable content, please visit our website at www.engineeringtomorrow.blog. Until next time, engineer for tomorrow, today.